Well, this is a project that I've had my eye on all of all of last year, and uh, I figured out the moves, and I just failed. Um, I I'm gonna wait till tomorrow to send, um, or hopefully send. I was just uh, was just at the top, and um, I. I got pretty freaked out, um, and I'm gonna wait tomorrow until I have a spotter to uh, to do the last couple moves because they're uh, they're pretty sketchy. Um, yeah. The process of solo first ascents is really intriguing to me. Being alone out here is addicting. Surrounded by nothing except the forest and the boulders. The birds and the wind are the only distractions. It allows for a unique experience that 99% of climbers will never fully understand and is something that isn't documented well in climbing. Failure is inherent in climbing. It's a source of growth and lends its hand to desire the prize even more. So when it comes to attempting first ascents, failure is a big part of the process and is enhanced even more when you have nothing else to concentrate on. It's you in the boulder and you try crazy things to try and connect the moves. For this particular boulder, nothing was obvious about the movement. I'd tried the upper moves on a rope in 2021, spending a long time figuring out the cryptic sequence. And on this trip, I again went on a rope to remember and rehearse the moves. I started filming when I was figuring out the bottom sequence. I had thought that this was also going to be a bit tricky, but it turned out to be a very simple, if not powerful, sequence. The lower section consists of three to four moves that are on you from the moment you pull on. For me, this was the last piece of the puzzle to figure out. The starting holds consist of a good left-hand edge and the best part of a bad sloping arete. Because everything relies heavily on the right hand, precise hand moves bump my hand up to an edge that has a two-finger divot. The next move is probably the hardest. Throwing the heel on the arete isn't so bad, but forces the left foot off of the hold and your whole body weight is relying on the heel to stay. For me, it was quite finicky. I never knew whether it would stay or not, and about 50% of the time, I'd end up back on the pads. All the sequences felt good to me. I rearranged the pads and moved the camera to a better angle. At this point, I wasn't planning on trying to send the line. My goal was to get the moves dialed and wait for the next day when I had a spotter. As I got more serious and started to give more attempts from the bottom, I reviewed everything from the beta to the landing zone and everything checked out. I felt good and got this sense that I really wanted to climb this thing right now. Although verging into highball territory and the scary moves up high, I was really calm and got a sense of confidence. As I moved into the head wall moves, I was in a flow state. I wasn't thinking about anything. I didn't look down. All I did was execute the moves I'd practiced and suddenly found myself touching the top of the boulder with my left hand. It didn't feel right. It's not a good hold. In fact, it's not really a hold at all. And suddenly, I came back to reality. I was in a very precarious position. My right foot could have blown at any time. I decided to bail because I knew the last two or three foot moves were some of the sketchiest of the entire climb. Climbing is a game, and I just failed from fear. But it was the right call to make. Failure isn't something you see much in videos because it's not cool. But at least for me, it is cool. I love the feeling of desire. I don't want to fail, and I'll do everything I can to not fail. But overall, the experience of figuring something out while solo was one of the best experiences. All in all, I guess Destiny was almost solo.
Oh, oh, did you slip yeah. that? Did you slip it down there? Your no. hand? Did you just flip it? You flipped it quick. I just panicked. Yeah. <laughs> I no. was like, oh, I caught my breath. I was like, oh, fuck. Oh, I wasn't rolling. Which can't. <laughs>